Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here, welcome back to my retrospective boxing series. Today we're going to be looking at a British fighter who had a lot of hype at one point and was generally considered one of the best prospects in the country, former two-time world title challenger Kevin Mitchell. So Kevin Mitchell was a lightweight contender who fought for the world title on two occasions. He was a product of the Frank Warren stable early in his career, and he was known for his blistering hand speed and his aggressive style. Despite the fact that he never really gets talked about anymore, I remember quite specifically that back in the day he was very highly regarded and pretty much every major boxing pundit in the UK had him pegged as a future world champion. Unfortunately though, he had several major setbacks and every time he was given an opportunity, it never worked out for him. So Kevin Mitchell turned pro in 2003. He started out with a string of knockout victories and was developing a reputation as a monstrous puncher with great hand speed and a lot of potential. The first major test of his career came in 2005, when he took on Mohamed Mejidi for the IBF Intercontinental title. He destroyed Mejidi, stopping him in the 6th round. He defended his title several times, including a fight against the undefeated Andre Izeo, winning by 11th round stoppage. He then got a shot at the vacant Commonwealth title against George Ashey, winning by a wide unanimous decision. After a few more early knockout wins, he got a shot at the British title against the champion Carl Johansson, stopping him in the ninth round. After a few more stoppage wins, including a 5th round KO of former world title challenger Walter Estrada, he got a shot at the WBO Intercontinental title against the dangerous KO puncher Bradis Prescott. Prescott was coming off of a close loss to Miguel Vasquez for the IBF world title who he had actually dropped in the first round. And not that long before that, a first round knockout victory over Amir Khan. Leading many people to pick Prescott to beat Mitchell, Mitchell put on one of the best performances of his career, completely schooling and dominating Prescott, winning by a wide unanimous decision. He had one successful defense of his title, knocking out Ignacio Mendoza in the second round, before taking on the dangerous Australian puncher, Michael Katsidis, for the WBO interim world title. Katsidis destroyed Mitchell, stopping him in the third round, giving Mitchell the first defeat of his career. After losing to Katsidis, Mitchell took a bit of a break from boxing and the following year came back and jumped straight in with the undefeated British contender John Murray. Murray was coming into the fight with a record of 31-0 and many people favoured him to beat Mitchell. Mitchell went on to put in another career best performance, knocking Murray out in the eighth round after a dominant performance. He went on to fight Felix Laura, dominating him over 10 rounds to win by a wide decision before getting his first world title shot against the WBO champion Ricky Burns in Glasgow. The fight was considered 50-50 going in and despite Ricky Burns beating Michael Katsidis a couple of fights earlier, many people thought that the improvements Mitchell had made since his loss to Katsidis would be enough to win him the fight. That proved not to be the case and Ricky destroyed Mitchell dominating him and stopping him in the 4th round giving Mitchell the second loss of his career. After losing to Burns, there was some speculation that Mitchell might retire. Nonetheless, he made a comeback the following year and had a string of easy wins before taking on Ghislaine Maduma in a world title eliminator, winning by an 11th round stoppage after a very competitive fight. He then beat the fringe contender Daniel Estrada, stopping him in the 8th round after a dominant performance, before getting a shot at the WBC world champion Jorge Linares. Mitchell entered the fight as a huge underdog and wasn't really given much of a chance to win. However, surprisingly, Mitchell went on to dominate Linares for the majority of the fight, outboxing and schooling him for most of the rounds. He knocked Linares down heavily in the fifth round and seemed on the verge of a stoppage victory. Sadly though, Mitchell suffered a nasty cut above his eye early in the fight from a clash of heads and it got worse as the fight went on. Despite winning the rounds, Mitchell's face started to swell up as Linares targeted the cut, and by the 10th round, the facial damage had gotten so bad that Mitchell just couldn't be allowed to continue. He was dropped in the 10th from pure pressure, and it seemed as if he took a knee, and despite beating the count, the referee Victor Lachlan took a close look at the facial damage and waved the fight off. It's a real shame in retrospect because Mitchell was right on the verge of becoming world champion, and the facial damage ruined his opportunity. He took on the undefeated KO puncher Ismael Barroso in his next fight for the WBA interim title and looked a shadow of his former self, getting stopped in the fifth round, retiring shortly after. So how good was Kevin Mitchell? Let's talk about it. 
Kevin Mitchell to me had a very interesting career in retrospect because he's a fighter who I genuinely believe could have been world champion if he had had a bit more luck. He was a guy who had some problems outside of the ring that got in the way of his boxing career and as a fighter, he had a lot of skills that on a good night made him a nightmare for anybody. I personally always thought that he was more talented than the likes of Amir Khan and with the right circumstances and management, he might have proven it. He obviously did have some flaws though, one of the biggest flaws he had was his overall fitness and dedication to the sport. He had incredible hand speed and hit extremely hard for a lightweight, but his defense was never great and you could argue he may have had a questionable chin. However, prior to the Ricky Burns fight, he never actually hit the canvas prior to that fight, so I don't know. I don't know whether he had a questionable chin or whether his powers of recovery just weren't that great. With all his losses coming by knockout and with the facial damage he ended up with in fights, you have to assume he was always vulnerable. But nonetheless, I do think he was a very good fighter despite the way his career ended up. He did a great job at domestic level and the only guys he ever lost to were genuinely world class in my opinion. So there are definitely a lot of what ifs in his career. Thanks for watching guys, I had a lot of fun talking about Kevin Mitchell's career because he was a lot of fun to watch and it's fun to speculate on how he would do in today's era of the lightweight division. But in all honesty, it's hard to say what form he would have been in. What I will say is though, on a good night, he was very hard to beat. Let me know what you guys think, stay tuned for more retrospective boxing videos. Thanks for watching and God bless.